Salawat. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-rahmanir rahim. Maliki yawmuddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين ألمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم ولا الضالين Salawat. Ah, Asghar bin tere, Mein chain kaha se paau? Ah, Asghar bin tere, Mein chain kaha se paau? Asghar bin tere Mein chain kaha se paau Aalot ki aja lal tere Jibar ke naz uthaau Asghar bin tere Mein chain kaha se paau میری آنکھ کتارا ہے تو مجھ کو جان سے پیارا ہے ماں دکھیاری کے جینے کا تو ہی لال سہارا ہے تجھ چھوڑ کے تنہا مکتل میں میں کیسے شام کو جاؤں Asghar bin tere Mein chain kaha se paau Asghar bin tere Mein chain kaha se paau Teri wo masum adai Teri yaad dilati hai تیرے پیار کی وہ سب باتیں مجھ کو بخت رلاتی ہیں میں تیری جدائی میں بیٹا رو رو کے مر نہ جاؤں آسغر بن تیرے میں چین کہاں سے پاؤں آسغر بن تیرے میں چین کہاں سے پاؤں لوری والے یہ تو تیرے ناز اٹھانے کے دن تھے آنکھوں میں تیری خوشیوں کے چاپ سجانے کے دن تھے آلوٹ کی اسگر آ بیٹا تیرا کرتا میں بدلاؤں آسگر بن تیرے میں چین کہاں سے پاؤں آسگر بن تیرے 
मैं चैन कहाँ से पाऊं भूल नहीं सकती माँ असगर प्यासे हूँ तेरे बेटा खाली गोद है और जिंदा है आ जा माँ के पास आ जा आनन्न मुजाहिद में तेरी अशकों से प्यास बुझाऊं आसगर बिन तेरे मैं चैन कहाँ से पाऊं आसगर बिन तेरे मैं चैन कहाँ से पाऊं आलोट किया जालाल तेरे जी भर के नाज उठाऊं आसगर बिन तेरे मैं चैन कहाँ से पाऊं अलफातिहा The skies are darkening, the desert is cold. Gone is my baby, just six months, six months old. The skies are darkening, the desert is cold. Gone is my baby, just six months old. I cannot find him. My little prince, come, your mother is calling for you. Oh, my sugar, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. You were so thirsty, your tongue was so dry. We couldn't fetch you water. Though we did try, you were so thirsty, your tongue was so dry. We couldn't fetch you water, though we did try. Is your thirst quenched now, O oh, beloved one? Come, your mother is calling for you. O oh, my sugar, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. One hormala ain't his arrow at you. Did he know that he wounded me too? One hormala ain't his arrow at you. Did he know that he wounded me too? My heart is broken. Oh, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. Oh, my sugar, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. My lap is empty now. Your cradle is bare. I cannot find. My lap is empty now. Your cradle is bare. I cannot find you anywhere. Who will I rock now, my precious son? 
Come, your mother is calling for you. Oh, my sister, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. How can I leave you in Karbala? The youngest martyr on Ashura. How can I leave you in Karbala? The youngest martyr on Ashura. How can my baby sleep in the sands? Come, your mother is calling for you. Oh, my sister, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. How can I go back to Medina? What will I say to your sister, Sughra? How can I go back to Medina? What will I say to your sister, Sughra? What will I do now? My Asghar is gone. Come, your mother is calling for you. Oh, my Asghar, where are you? Come, your mother is calling for you. Al-Fatiha. Muhammad in Wali Muhammad Salawat, Allah, Mustali Ala, Muhammad in Wali Muhammad. Rouhani Mazli sponsored for today. Mazli has been sponsored by Al Haj, Kasmali by Bamani for the Salah Sabab of Marum Jan Muhammad by Shivji Bamani, Marum Asugra by the Ramshi Magani, Marum Amina by Jan Muhammad Bamani, Marum Fatna by Jan Muhammad Bamani. Marum Muhammad Hussain by Jan Muhammad, Marum Gulam Ali by Bandali, Marum Muhammad Ali by Jadawji, Marum Zainab by Hemraj, Marum Alayla by Muhammad Ali Jadawji, Marum Zerhabanu by Muhammad Ali Jadawji, Marum Hussain by Bisram, Marum Shirin by Muhammad Ali Jadawji, Marum Muhammad Jafar by Kara, Marum Hussain by Moledina, Marum Muhammad Moledina of Mombasa, Marum Jafar Ali Mula Nanji, Marum Rukaya by Muhammad Ali Kara, Marum Muhammad Ali Wal, Walji and Kul Marumins. Next Mazri has been sponsored by Amir by Muhammad Ali Walji for this Ali Sawab of Marum Muhammad Ali by Walji, Maruma Zainab by Muhammad Ali Walji, Maruma Kanize Fatima Muhammad Ali Walji, Marun Mosin by Muhammad Ali Walji and Kul Marumins. Next Mazri has been sponsored by Dr. Al Haj Murtaza by Walji and family for this Ali Sawab. Of Murtaza by Walji's families, Marumin and Kul Marumin. Next Madlis is by Bandar Khuda for the Sale Sawab of Marum Ali by Rajab Ali Pardan, Marumins of Panjwani family, Marumins of Pardan family, Marumins of Mamdani family, and Kul Marumins. Next Madlis has been sponsored by Marum Al Haj Amir by ja Jamal Datu for the Sale Sawab of Marum Imam Musa Sadr and Kul Marumins. The next Madlis has been sponsored. By Al Haj without send by Jetta for the Sale Sawab of the Fazal Jetta family, Nazarli by Jetta family, Marum Gulamli Jetta family, Marum Muhammad Jetta family, and Kul Marumins. The next Muslim has been sponsored 
ਉਹਦੀ ਸਾਲੇ ਸਵਾਬ ਆਫ ਮਰੂਮ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਤਕੀ ਭਾਈ ਵਾਲ ਜੀ ਮਰੂਮ ਆਮੀਨਾ ਬਾਈ ਵਾਲ ਜੀ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਆਫ ਅਲੀ ਬਾਈ ਵਾਲ ਜੀ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਆਫ ਕਾਜ਼ਮੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਕੁਲ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਮਸਜਿਦ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਸਪਾਂਸਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਮਰੂਮ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਰਜ਼ਾ ਬਾਈ ਲਾਦਕ ਐਂਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਫੋਰ ਦਿਸ ਸਾਲੇ ਸਵਾਬ ਆਫ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਕੁਲਸਮ ਬਾਈ ਲਾਦਕ ਐਂਡ ਕੁਲ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਮਸਜਿਦ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਸਪਾਂਸਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਹੁਸੈਨ ਬਾਈ ਅਸਾਰੀਆ ਫੋਰ ਦਿਸ ਸਾਲੇ ਸਵਾਬ ਆਫ ਮਰੂਮ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਅਲੀ ਬਾਈ ਕੁਰਜੀ ਰਾਜਨ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਸ਼ੇਰਬਾਨ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਅਲੀ ਕੁਰਜੀ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਲੈਲਾ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਤਕੀ ਦਾਲਾ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਮਜ਼ਿਆ ਬਾਈ ਅਲੀ ਹੁਸੈਨ ਮੰਜੀ ਮਰੂਮ ਗੁਲਾਮ ਬਾਸ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਅਲੀ ਕੁਰਜੀ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਜਮੀਲਾ ਬਾਈ ਅਸਾਰੀਆ ਮਰੂਮ ਅਸਕਰ ਅਲੀ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਅਲੀ ਕੁਰਜੀ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਕਨੀਜ਼ ਖਾਤੂਨ ਮਹਿਦੀ ਹੁਸੈਨ ਕਾਬਾ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਰਿਹਾਨਾ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਤਕੀ ਦਾਲਾ ਮਰੂਮ ਆ ਬਤੂਲ ਬਾਈ ਮੁਹੰਮਦ ਤਕੀ ਦਾਲਾ ਐਂਡ ਕੁਲ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਹਮਬਲ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟਡ ਟੂ ਰਿਸਾਈਟ ਸੂਰਾ ਫਾਤਿਹਾ ਫੋ ਕੁਲ ਮਰੂਮੀਨਸ ਅਲ ਫਾਤਿਹਾ ਬਿਸਮਿਲ੍ਲਾਹਿਰ ਰਹਿਮਾਨਿਰ ਰਹੀਮ my apologies i've just uh, been told that today's majlis has also been sponsored by sister shamim banu bhai amirali for the sale sawab of marum rajab ali bhai ibrahim ukka maruma rukaya bhai peer bhai danji maruma lela bhai rajab ali ukka maruma yasmin bhai rajab ali ukka marum ali hussain amirali muhammad ali walji marum safraz amirali muhammad ali walji Marum Muhammad Hussain Amir Ali Muhammad Ali Walji and Kul Marumins you are humbly requested to recite Surah Fatiha for Kul Marumins Al Fatiha اللهم صل على محمد الفاتحه بسم الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على البشير النذير السراج المنير أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين رحمة للعالمين شفيع المذنبين أنيس الفقراء والمساكين سيدنا ونبينا 
وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا وحبيب قلوبنا الرسول المؤيد والنبي المسدد المصطفى الأمجد والمحمود الأحمد حبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد آه محمد والصلاة والسلام على لبيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد قال الإمام الحسين عليه السلام للقاسم يا قاسم كيف تجد طعم الموت قال يا عما أحلى من العسل صلوات حسن کو بادشاہ خاص و عام کہتے ہیں حسن کو بادشاہ خاص و عام کہتے ہیں علی کا نائب و قائم مقام کہتے ہیں اور دلیل ایک ہی کافی ہے ان کی عظمت میں دلیل ایک ہی کافی ہے ان کی عظمت میں انہیں حسین بھی اپنا امام کہتے ہیں ایک سلوات پڑھے محمد و عالم پر صلی سورہ کوثر کی تفسیر زہرا کا پہلا لاڈلا علی کا جانشین اور جوانہ نے جنت کے سردار ہمارے دوسرے امام یہ وہ مظلوم امام ہیں جن کا ذکر بہت کم کیا جاتا ہے اور حقیقت یہ ہے کہ اسی امام کے زمانے میں کئی فتنے ظاہر ہوئے تھے اور لوگ چھوٹی چھوٹی چیزوں کی خاطر اپنا ایمان بیچ رہے تھے جو آج کے زمانے میں ہو رہا ہے لوگ دنیا کی فنا ہونے والی چیزوں کے لیے لوگ اپنے ایمان کا سودا کرتے ہیں بس سزا دارو ایک واقعہ بیان کرنا چاہتا ہوں امام مولا کائنات کے زمانے میں شہنشاہ روم نے ایک خط لکھا حاکم شام کی طرف اور اپنے قاصد سے کہا کہ جب تم حاکم شام کے پاس پہنچو تو اسے یہ سوالات دینا اور اس سے کہنا کہ کیونکہ وہ جانشین رسول ہے تو اس سے کہنا ان سوالوں کے جوابات مجھے واپس بھیجے اب جب یہ قاصد حاکم شام کے پاس پہنچتا ہے اور حاکم شام کو وہ سوالات دیتا ہے اب حاکم شام وہ سوالات پڑھتے ہی پریشان ہو جاتا ہے جانتا نہیں کہ سوالات کے جواب کیسے دوں آخر کار اس نے کہا کہ تم صاحب ممبر سلونی کے پاس جاؤ یا وہیں سے تمہیں تمہارے سوالات کے جواب ملیں گے آخر کار یہ قاصد پہنچتا ہے مولا کائنات کے در پر مولا کائنات کی بارگاہ میں آتا ہے اور کہتا ہے کہ میں سوالات لایا ہوں اور شہنشاہ روم اس کے جواب چاہتے ہیں تو مولا کائنات اپنے دونوں فرزندوں کی طرف اشارہ کرتے ہوئے کہتے ہیں ان دونوں میں سے کسی ایک سے بھی پوچھ لو اب وہ تھوڑا پریشان ہوا اور سوچنے لگا کہ نعوذ باللہ کیا بڑوں کو جواب نہیں آتا جو کہہ رہے ہیں کہ چھوٹوں سے پوچھ لو انہی سوچوں میں تھا امام حسن آگے بڑھے اور فرمایا کہ شریعتوں کا مکمل حساب لیتا جا شریعتوں کا مکمل حساب لیتا جا ضعیف ڈھونڈ کے لا شباب لیتا جا اور غلام زادے نہیں ہم امام زادے ہیں غلام زادے نہیں ہم امام زادے ہیں سوال ذہن میں رکھ جواب لیتا جا ایک سلوات پڑھے محمد و علی محمد پر یا علی اس نے سوال کیا آپ جواب جانتے ہیں امام نے فرمایا اگر تم کہو تو تمہارے لائے ہوئے سوال بھی خود ہی بتا دوں تو امام نے پھر خود فرمایا امام نے فرمایا تمہارا پہلا سوال یہ ہے کہ حق اور باطل میں کیا فرق ہے کتنا فرق ہے تو امام نے خود ہی جواب میں کہا کہ حق اور باطل میں چار انگلیوں کا فاصلہ ہے جو آنکھ سے دیکھو وہ حق جو کان سے سنو وہ باطل کان اور آنکھ کے بیچ چار انگلیوں کا فاصلہ ہے دوسرا سوال یہ ہے زمین و آسمان کے درمیان کتنا فاصلہ ہے امام نے پھر فرمایا زمین و آسمان کے درمیان مظلوم کی ایک آہ کا فاصلہ ہے مظلوم کی ایک فریاد زمین سے آسمان تک 
آسمان کے سفر کو ایک لمحے میں طے کر کے عرش بری تک پہنچ جاتی ہے اور اگر کوئی شخص خلوص دل سے یقین کے ساتھ اپنی رب کی بارگاہ میں دعا کرے تو اس کی وہ دعا زمین و آسمان کی تمام بندشوں کو توڑتے ہوئے اس کے رب تک پہنچ جاتی ہے تیسرا سوال یہ ہے مشرق اور مغرب کے درمیان کتنا فاصلہ ہے اب دیکھیے امام نے جو جواب فرمایا ہے آج کل تو ہمارے پاس کلاکس ہیں واچز ہیں گھڑیاں ہیں اس زمانے میں تو نہیں تھا لیکن امام کا جواب سنیے امام فرماتے ہیں مشرق اور مغرب کے درمیان سورج کے ایک دن کے سفر کا فاصلہ ہے چوتھا سوال یہ ہے لسٹ ٹین تھنگس ان وچ ایچ ون اسٹرانگ اینڈ مور پاورفل دین دی ادر دا امام دین سیز اسٹون از اے اسٹرانگ کریشن آف اللہ بٹ آئرن از اسٹرانگ دین اسٹون بیکاز اٹ کین بریک دا اسٹون فائر از اسٹرانگ دین آئرن بیکاز اٹ کین میلٹ دا آئرن واٹر از مور پاورفل دین فائر بیکاز از It, because it extinguishes the fire. Clouds are more powerful than water because they carry the water. Winds are stronger than the clouds because they blow the clouds away. Angels are more powerful than wind because they control the wind. Angel of death is stronger than the other angels. Death is more powerful than the angel of death and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpowers death بیکاز ہی از ہائی القیوم جو دہر میں پھیلا ہے وہی نور جلی ہے جو دہر میں پھیلا ہے وہی نور جلی ہے دارین پہ ہے جس کا تصرف وہ ولی ہے اور وہ موت ہے جو ہو ملک الموت پہ قابض وہ موت ہے جو ہو ملک الموت پہ قابض جو موت کو مارے وہ میرا بابا علی ہے ایک سلوات پڑھے محمد و علی محمد پر. امام حسن کا دسترخوان اور ان کی سخاوت بہت مشہور ہے ایک شخص امام حسن کی بارگاہ میں آیا اور اس نے کچھ مالی مدد طلب کی تو امام نے اپنے غلام سے کہا کہ میرے پاس جو کچھ ہے سب اسے دے دو تو وہ سائل سوال کرتا ہے مولا آپ اپنے لیے کچھ نہیں رکھیں گے اب امام ایک شاعرانہ انداز میں جواب دیتے ہیں مولا فرماتے ہیں تجود قبل سعالی انفسنا خوف علا ما وجہ میں یسل ہم وہ ہیں جو سوال کرنے سے پہلے عطا کر دیتے ہیں تاکہ سائل کے چہرے کی آبرو رہ جائے ولو علم البحر فضلنا علینا لغا من بعد فیض ہی خجل اور اگر سمندر کو ہماری سخاوت کا علم ہو جائے تو سمندر اپنی سخاوت پر شرمندہ ہو جائے گا ایک شخص اللہ مصلی علی ایک شخص امام حسن کے پاس آیا اور سوال کیا مولا لیلت القدر کون سی رات ہے تو امام نے فرمایا خدا نے سات زمین خلق کی سات آسمان خلق کی ہے جن اور انس کو بھی سات کی عدد سے خلق کیا تو تم بھی لیلت القدر کو ماہ رمضان کی آخری سات راتوں میں تلاش کرو بس ازاداروں بی بی سیدہ کے یہ دونوں فرزند کریم ہیں چاہے وہ امام حسن ہو یا امام حسین دونوں کا کردار دونوں کی عطا بالکل مشابہ ہے ایک بار رسول اکرم مسجد النبوی میں تشریف فرماتے اور یہ دونوں شہزادے رسول کے پاس تشریف فرماتے ہیں رسول نے اپنا دست مبارک اور امام حسن کے دست مبارک کو ساتھ میں رکھا پھر اصحاب سے سوال کیا کیا نظر آتا ہے تو اصحاب نے کہا سبحان اللہ یا رسول اللہ بالکل فرق نہیں پھر رسول نے اپنے قدم مبارک اور امام حسین کے قدم مبارک کو عیا کیا پھر سوال کیا تو تکبیر کی صدا بلند ہوئی کہا یا رسول اللہ بالکل فرق نہیں دونوں بالکل مشابہ ہیں اب رسول نے حدیث فرمائی کہا جب حسن کا ہاتھ صلاح کے لیے اٹھے سمجھنا محمد نے صلاح کی جب حسین کے قدم قیام کے لیے اٹھے سمجھنا محمد نے قیام کیا ایک سلوات پڑھے محمد و اہل محمد پر محمد ہم نے اکثر 
زمانے کے امام کی خوبصورتی کے بارے میں سنا ہے یا کمرے بنی ہاشم کے پرنو چہرے کے بارے میں سنا ہے ابن اسحاق ابن اسحاق بیان کرتے ہیں کہ امام حسین امام حسن کے چہرے پر وہ نورانیت اور وہ کشش تھی کہ میں جب بھی ان کے چہرے مبارک کی طرف نگاہ کرتا میرے آنکھوں سے آنسو روا ہو جاتے بس ازاداروں امام حسن کی دس سالہ محنت کے نتیجے میں امام حسین کو کربلا جیسی فتح نصیب ہوئی امام حسن کے گھرانے سے سولہ سکسٹین ممبرز کربلا میں موجود تھے ان کی اولاد ان کی اولادیں بھی موجود تھیں جن میں سے ایک حسن مصنع ہے جنہوں نے عاشور کے دن کربلا میں جنگ کی زخمی ہوئے بے ہوش ہو گئے تھے پھر اہل حرم کے ساتھ واپس مدینے لوٹ گئے اور آج امام حسن کی نسل انہی سے قائم ہے دوسرے فرزند عبداللہ ابن حسن جنہوں نے عاشور کے دن امام حسین کی شہادت سے بالکل پہلے جب جب ظالم امام حسین پر وار کرنے جا رہا تھا تو عبداللہ اس وقت خیام سے دوڑتے ہوئے اپنے چچا کی نصرت کو آئے اور اپنے چچا کی نصرت میں اپنے ہاتھوں کو آگے کیا وہیں پر ان کے بازو قلم ہوئے اور ان کی شہادت وہیں پر واقع ہوئی دو فرزند امام حسن کے شام غریبہ میں اس قیامت جیسے ماحول میں وہ دو فرزند رات کا اندھیرا تھا گھوڑوں کی ٹاپوں کے نیچے پامال ہو گئے اور ایک اور فرزند جن کا نام قاسم ہے قسمت رکو پذیر ہے ان کے سلام میں قسمت رکو پذیر ہے ان کے سلام میں امکان سر نگو ہے کہیں احترام میں قدرت الہ سلام مقدس کے حرف چن قدرت الہ سلام مقدس کے حرف چن قدرت الہ سلام مقدس کے حرف چن اللہ کے چار نام ہیں قاسم کے نام میں ایک درود پڑھے محمد و عالی محمد پر تو جناب قاسم امام حسن کے ایک اور فرزند جو تین سال کے تھے امام حسن کی شہادت کے وقت اور امام حسن نے اپنی شہادت سے پہلے قاسم کے بازو پر ایک تعویز باندھا تھا اور بی بی فروا سے کہا تھا کہ اے مادر قاسم جب تم پر کوئی عظیم مصیبت آئے تب اس تعویز کو کھول دینا امام حسن کی شہادت واقع ہوتی ہے کئی سال گزرتے ہیں ایک رات بی بی فروا خواب دیکھتی ہے خواب میں کیا دیکھتی ہے دیکھتی ہے کہ وہ ایک باغ میں موجود ہے اور سامنے انہیں ایک گلاب کا پھول نظر آتا ہے تو اب بی بی فروا اس گلاب کے پھول کی طرف چلتی ہیں جیسے ہی قریب پہنچتی ہے وہ چاہتی ہیں کہ اس گلاب کے پھول کو اپنے دامن میں لے لیں لیکن آزادار ہو وہ گلاب کا پھول زمین پر گر جاتا ہے اور اس کی پتیاں بکھر جاتی ہیں پھر وہ دیکھتی ہیں امام حسین آتے ہیں اپنے دامن کو اپنے ابا کو بچھاتے ہیں زمین پر ایک ایک کر کے ساری پتیوں کو اپنے دامن میں جمع کرتے ہیں اور وہیں پر بی بی فروا کی آنکھ کھل جاتی ہے اب بی بی فروا اس واقعے کو امام حسین اس خواب کو امام حسین سے بیان کرتی اور سوال کرتی ہیں کہ آقا اس خواب کی تعبیر کیا ہے اب امام حسین کی آنکھوں سے آنسو روا ہو گئے اور امام حسین نے کہا اے مادر قاسم ایک وقت ضرور آئے گا جب آپ کو اپنی خواب کی تعبیر معلوم ہوگی اور آپ بھی اسی جگہ پر موجود ہوں گے بس ازادار ہو آشور کی رات تھی امام حسین ہر ایک سپاہی سے کہتے کل تم بھی شہید ہو گئے کل تم بھی جامع شہادت نوش کرو گے کل تم بھی خدا کی راہ میں قربان ہو گے لیکن اے قاسم تنہا کھڑے رہے آنکھوں سے آنسو روا تھے امام حسین قریب آئے سوال کیا یا قاسم کیف تجدو طعم الموت اے قاسم موت تمہاری نظر میں کیسی ہے قاسم اس کو 
مسکراتے ہوئے جواب دیئے یا عما احلا من العسل شہد سے بھی زیادہ شیری وہیں پر امام حسین نے کہا قاسم مبارک ہو تم پر تمہارا چچا فدا ہو جائے کل تم بھی شہید ہوگے بس ازادار و عشور کی صبح نمودار ہوئی جناب قاسم بار بار کوشش کرتے لیکن ہر بار امام حسین اسے رکنے کے لئے کہتے آخر کار اسی تعویز کے وسیلے سے جناب قاسم کو اجازت ملی اب امام حسین نے قاسم کو تیار کیا شبیہ حسن کو تیار کیا گھوڑے پر سوار کر آیا جیسے ہی گھوڑے پر سوار کر آیا قاسم کے گرے بان کھول دیئے اب جب قاسم نے سوال کیا تو امام نے فرمایا قاسم یہ یتیموں کی نشانی ہے شاید فوج عشقیاء تم پر رحم کھالے یتیم سمجھ کر تم پر ظلم کرنے سے باز آ جائے وہ سب جناب قاسم روانہ ہوئے بہترین جنگ کی تیرہ سال کی عمر میں وہ اتنی پیاس کے باوجود بھی لڑتے گئے ایک ایک کر کے واصل جہنم کرتے گئے عمر سعید نے وہاں سے صدا دی یہ عباس کا شاگرد ہے بنی حاشم کا جوان ہے ایک ایک کر کے جاؤ گے تو مارے جاؤ گے وہ سب مل کے حملہ کرو اسے ہر طرف سے گھیر لو ازادہ رو کربلا کی زمین پر فروا کی کمائی لٹ گئی قاسم گھوڑے سے زمین پر گرے وہاں سے امام حسین دوڑے مولا عباس پیچھے پیچھے بھاگے اب ان دونوں شیروں کو آتے ہوئے دیکھا میں سرا کی فوج میں منا کی طرف بھاگی میں سرا کی فوج میں منا کی طرف بھاگی روایتیں کہتی ہیں قاسم زندہ تھے جب ان کی لاش پامال ہوئے اب امام حسین قاسم کے سرحان نے پہنچے اسی خواب کی تعبیر کی طرح اپنی عبا کو زمین پر بچھایا ایک ایک جسم کے ٹکڑے کو جمع کرتے اور اسی گھٹری کو اپنے خیموں کی طرف لائے زینب در خیمہ پر کھڑی تھی سوال کیا بھائیہ قاسم کدھر ہے امام حسین نے وہی پر اپنی عبا کھولے ام فروا سجدے میں گئی اور کہا بھی بیو مجھے مبارک بادی دو میری قربانی سب سے زیادہ قبول ہو گئی اسی عالم الذین ظلموا ایہ منقلبی منقلبوا یا اللہ ہمارے اس قلیل ذکر کو اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرما ہمارے نو سو کو رومال سیدہ میں جگہ عنایت فرما ہم سب کو مقصد حسین پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما حاضرین مجلس کی حاجات کو قبول فرما تمام مرہومین کی قبور پر اپنی رحمت کی بارش نازل فرما تمام بیماروں کو شفاء کاملہ اور آجلہ نصیب فرما اور امام زمانہ کے ظہور میں تعجیل فرما ربنا تقبل منا انک انت السمیع العلیم محمد و آل محمد صلوات بر محمد و آل محمد صلوات مومنین وی آر ویری پلیز ٹو ہیو الحاج حیدر بائی ہودا فرام دا خوزہ شیائس ناصری مسلم کمیونیٹی آف پیٹ برمنگم ہو ایس ہیر ویتھ ایس ٹیم فور دا فنڈ ریزنگ فور آل عباس اسلامیک سینٹر پلیز لیس آل ویلکم ہم ویتھ لاؤڈ نار صلوات
Respected ulama, my elders, brothers, sisters, and children in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Condolences to our 12th Imam, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. As we commemorate the merciless killing of Sayyid al Shahada, Imam Hussein Salawatullahi wa Salamu and his beloved family. Some of you already know me as I'm originally from this wonderful city. For those who don't, my name is Haider Huda and I am the head of finance of Birmingham Jamaat. Along with myself today, in the gents, we have Brother Shabir Rajbar, Brother Rizwan Ramji, Brother Murtaza Bhai Master, and in the ladies, we have Sister Ifat Bhai Rajbai, Sister Mumtaz Bhai Moti, Sister Ashraf Anti Sumar, and Sister Azmina Kamal, formerly Dunji, another fellow Peterborean. I stand before you today to provide you with an overview of our community and our project to expand our facilities. Before I continue, we have a short overview video that will now be played on the screens. Can I request the video to be played, please? Our project is named after and dedicated to Abbas ibn Ali, peace be upon him, the king of chivalry and the most loyal companion to his brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Allow us to take you on a journey through the exciting new Abbasi Islamic Center let us explore how it will meet the needs of our community for many generations to come, inshallah. The Imam Barga is our community hall. It is where we come to learn about how to live like the most pious family of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Where we stand shoulder to shoulder in prayer, where we eat together, and most importantly, where we enjoy our beloved mosque chai. Our current Imam Barga sits 685 men and women comfortably. As part of our new project, the Imam Barga will be rebuilt on two floors and not only allow 1,130 people to sit comfortably, but also provide vastly improved anonymity facilities. If the Imam Barga is the body of our center, the mosque is its heart. It is a tranquil place for prayer, supplication and quiet contemplation. With the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have seen a rapid growth in our community over the last few years. With your help, we can increase the capacity of the mosque from 82 to 250 people praying. A community center should be more than a religious facility. It should be a focal point where the young and old come to meet and socialize. A place where lifelong friendships are made. Having a modern sports hall and a cafe within the grounds will turn the center into a space where our religious and social needs are met. The facility will be able to accommodate a volleyball court, three badminton courts, or five-a-side football, as well as a cafe, facility, and gym. Such a facility will ensure future generations coming to the center for many years to come. The passing away of a loved one is one of the hardest times anyone has to face. As a community that supports each other from cradle to grave, we have designed a Ghusl Kafan facility that is more than double the size of our current facility, which will also have a private family room where loved ones can come and meet to console one another and provide comfort through prayer. We pray our center is worthy of being dedicated to a man who 1400 years later still inspires us and inshallah goes on to inspire our future generations. We know that no community would have been created if it wasn't for the warm generosity of our global family. Please visit www.abasi.org.uk forward slash donate in order to help us build a center that will facilitate the development of this community 
in order to serve society at large. In the video you'll have seen the donate link that has now changed to ksmnet.org forward slash donate. Alhamdulillah, Birmingham Jamaat has been established for nearly 50 years and much like Peterborough, we first started in a house in the 70s before moving to our existing site in 1981. Our Jamaat has grown significantly during this time <clears throat> with immigration from Kenya, Tanzania, Somalia and Uganda. Recently, we have also seen many from across the UK move to Birmingham due to the city offering good economic prospects while offering a better cost of living compared to London. Peterborough has gone through a similar transformation. You are approaching the end of your beautiful project and I congratulate Peterborough Jamaat on the amazing work that has been accomplished here. Your beautiful centre here inspires us to take examples back to our own project and to learn from. Those of, you who, those of you who have visited Birmingham will agree with me that we have a very welcoming and vibrant community. Our subcommittees offer a range of diverse services to, to the members, from secular education, to children's tablig, to economic development and sports. We also have a committee that looks into catering for those with special needs. As a result of this growth in population and activities, we need a, a larger centre that will provide the space for all of these to be appropriately conducted. Alhamdulillah, the journey of our project began a few years ago. We have now completed the construction of the new dedicated Ghusl Khana facilities and acquired additional places of land near our own main complex to make the expansion possible. For those of you who have come to our centre recently, you will have noticed that our Imambara and Masjid have been demolished in preparation for the new complex to be built on the same land. We are currently holding our programs in a temporary structure built on the land opposite the main complex. So in summary, our project is a very much in flight and inshallah in the next three to six months we shall start seeing the foundations being laid and the erection of our new Mambara in Masjid. To give you a quick overview, the Imam Bara in Masjid will be more than double the size of our previous buildings, with additional amenities including facilities for the disabled, a kitchen more than three times the size of the previous one, father and toddler facilities, and additional wudu and toilet facilities. We are also planning to build a multi-purpose sports hall within our complex to cater for the youth, and to also to create a strong social atmosphere within our community. The video you have shown the video you have seen shows this. However, since the acquisition earlier this year, the commercial estates opposite our complex, uh, opposite our complex, we are currently reviewing the possibilities of having a much larger multi-purpose sports and community facility within the newly acquired land. So I stand before you today to appeal for funds. We are hoping we can successfully complete our Masjid and Imambara phase within the next two to three years. The cost of the Imambara and Masjid phase is just over £6 million, although we expect this to be slightly higher due to the current inflation. Alhamdulillah, with the generous generosity of our community from across the globe, we have currently got approximately £2 million in the bank and additionally about approximately 700000 in pledges. But as you can imagine, we, we, as we make payments to progress the work, the money will dry out very, very soon. If we look at our community in different parts of the world, we have established ourselves and expanded through the support of each other. I thank the Executive Committee of Peterborough Jamaat to give us this platform today to address you. So I request you to please donate whatever amount possible towards this project. We have our teams here in both the ladies and gents waiting to, for you to come forward, answer any questions you may have, and to receive pledges, donations, set up direct debits for any amount you can and wish to give on a regular basis. These funds will go towards Thawab Ejariya, which will be earned whenever someone uses the facility for prayers or for attending lectures and the Zardari programs. You can also give one-off donations via the QR code that is also on the desks where our teams are located. In addition, if you want to pay by card, 
Your treasurer's desk have agreed to take card payments on our behalf and submit the funds directly to us. You can also visit our website, ksmnet.org, and use the payments link for AIC, for Al Abbas Islamic Center, to send payments directly. Or you can come and see me or anyone from our team after the program. We are here at your disposal to answer any questions you, you may have regarding our project. Brothers and sisters, it is through these acts that we re acts that the remembrance of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his revolution get passed from one generation to another. Isn't it a miracle that nearly 1400 years later, we continue to conduct the Azadari programs with the same passion and derive inspiration from this sacrifice, thus reflecting and reforming our lives. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this noble action and gives us the strength to get the spark to boost our faith even further. Ameen. I thank you for your time and request you to please remember us and our project in your du'as. Finally, coming back here and seeing so many familiar faces brings joy to my heart. However, I can also see that many, many faces that I grew up, with, grew up with here in Peterborough and very much loved are no longer with us. May I request you to please recite a Surah Fatiha for these wonderful individuals and all our Marhumeen Al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Shabir teri ghurbat ki kasam Main lash teri dafna deti Shabir teri ghurbat ki kasam Main lash teri dafna deti Kausar ke tujhe chinte deti Zam zam se tujhe nehla deti Shabir teri gurbat ki kasam Main lash teri dafna deti Qasim ka badan akbar ka jigar Abbas ka bazu on ka sar Qasim ka badan akbar ka jigar Abbas ka bazu on ka sar अब कुछ भी नहीं है जोली में होता तो तेरा सदका देती शबीर तेरी गुरबत की कसम मैं लाश तेरी दफना देती Shabir ye desh par aya hai Varna mein tumhari meyat par Shabir ye desh par aya hai Varna mein tumhari meyat par Ambar lagati kaliyo ke Phoolo 
کی میں برسا دیتی شبیر تیری غربت کی قسم میں لاش تیری دفنا دیتی اے بھائی تجھے معلوم تو ہے رسی میں بندے تھے ہاتھ میرے اے بھائی تجھے معلوم تو ہے رسی میں بندے تھے ہاتھ میرے ورنہ میں تمہاری میت پر چادر کا کفن پہنا دیتی شبیر تیری غربت کی قسم میں لاش تیری دفنا دیتی کوسر کے تجھے چھنتے دیتی زمزم سے تجھے نہلا دیتی شبیر تیری گربت کی قسم میں لاش تیری دفنا دیتی الفاتحہ السلوات نار تکبیر نار رسالت نار حیدری قاسم کو کربلا میں سجاتے رہے حسین قاسم کو کربلا میں سجاتے رہے حسین ابن حسن کو دھلا بناتے رہے حسین ابن حسن کو دھلا بناتے رہے حسین مہندی بھی روئی فٹ کر سہرا بھی رو دیا مہندی بھی روئی فٹ کر سہرا بھی رو دیا دریا بھی آنسو کے بہاتے رہے حسین دریا بھی آنسو کے بہاتے رہے حسین قاسم اتر کا سندھ سے تقسیم ہو گیا قاسم اتر کا سندھ سے تقسیم ہو گیا فروا کا لال کربلا میں پامال ہو گیا سلوات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي وحبيبي ونور قلبي طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها أب القاسم المستفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا نبي الله 
صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك الميامين فاز من اعتصم بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم سادتي يا أولياء الله يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات على محمد وآل محمد قال الله العلي العظيم في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صدق الله العلي العظيم It's very simple for anyone to ask that when we talk about the concept of Imam Al-Hujjah Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Al-Sharif Allah It is very easy to ask, where is it is mentioned in the Quran that there will be a 12th Imam? Where can we point to that in the Quran? What proof do we have that there is an Imam who will come after Rasulullah? And Quran confirms that. Where can we find that? Is there any ayah in the Quran indicating that? The answer is yes. There are many ayahs in the Quran that talks about Imam al hujjah One of them is the one that we just read in Surah At-Tawbah, where the Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the twelfth Imam, but indirectly. How? He says, "Huwa al-ladhi arsal Rasulahu bil huda." Allah said, "I sent my messenger." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He is the sender of the Prophet. And that is one of the, our aqidah. As the Shia school of thought, we believe that the Imam and Risala, nobody can appoint them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Imam and Risala is not for you and I to decide who can become Imam, who can become the messenger. And why would Allah don't let us don't to choose? We choose our president, don't we? Ya Allah, why don't you let us? I tell you why. 
Because human being, you and I, we don't know future. And we don't know things the way we should. How many times you and I, we elected president. And we were happy. We're thinking he is it. MashaAllah. And two months later, he said, Allahu Akbar. I can't wait his turn to, to come to an end. That's a human being. Because we don't know what is the future. Now, if Allah is to let us to choose the prophet and imams, what happened? The next year, he said, ah, no, I don't like this prophet. We need to change it. Then the prophethood and imama becomes a play in the hand of people. And maqam al-imama and risala is not a joke. It has to be selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is one of the reasons. So the ayah reminds us, he, Allah, is the one, arsala, sent rasulahu, his messenger. What did he send him with? He said, bideen al-haqq, the true religion. Now, one of the questions, because I know a lot of our youth, Sometimes we question, how do we know that Islam is the religion? Why not the Judaism? Why not the Christianity? And I'll tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. Islam is a true religion because Islam is inclusive religion. What that means, when you become a Muslim, you are automatically Christian too. So you don't need to become Christian when you're already Christian. When you become a Muslim, you are already a Jew. So you don't need to become Jew because you already are. Why and how? Now listen to the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ They have to believe what was sent upon you. And believe what was sent before you too. Which means I cannot be a Muslim unless I believe what? In Jesus. I cannot be a Muslim unless I believe in Musa. So for you to become a Muslim, you must believe in all of those prophets, including their books too. And Surah Al-Baqarah, at the end of the surah, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رُسُلِهِ So we would not differentiate between one prophet and the other. Now today, if I say, I like Prophet Isa so much, but Musa, not so. No, I don't like Musa. Allah said, no, you can't do that. They're all one package. You cannot pick and choose. I like this, I don't. No, they're all, it's a one package. As you accept Islam, you have to accept all of them. From Adam alayhi salam up to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And that is what Islam is about. So the Quran says, Arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq And the true religion. Because everything Prophet Isa brought is in Islam too. Now, if you want to check in Surah Maryam, Musa Isa alayhi salam, when he was born, what did he say? He says, Inni Abdullah, Atani al Kitab, Wajalani Nabiyan, Wa Awsani bis Salat. You have Salat too in your Salat. Right? Wa Awsani bis Salat, Wa Zakat, Ma Dum to Hayya. He said, Allah asked me to pay Zakat. Isa, at this time, he pays Zakat, and you are also. Then he says, وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّةً وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي And be kind and obedient to my parents. But Isa alayhi salam, when Allah told him, he said, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي Obedient to my mother. Because he doesn't have a father. But for you and I, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيَّ Both of them. And you can pick and choose. I like my mom, but my dad, no. Allah said they both are equally required to obey them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in all the religions, whatever they were told to do. Now, fasting, Allah tells in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum. 
the people before you, they used to fast too. So today when you're fasting, don't think that you are the one Islam picked to make you fast. No, Musa used to fast too. Isa, they all used to fast. Everything you do, they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, الحق This is the key point, brothers and sisters. Allah said, this religion that we sent Prophet Muhammad with, the intention and the aim لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ To be able to prevail upon the entire religions on the earth. They have to. This religion of Islam must be the religion that tops all the religions. No question. Had that ever happened anytime? When the Prophet Muhammad came until he died, have you heard anywhere in the history or Quran where religion at some point was able to conquer the entire universe? The answer is no. So what does it mean? Does it mean the Quran is lying? When Allah said, hasn't happened yet. So is Quran is lying? Allah said, no, we don't buy it. Ya Allah, are you failing your promise? Allah said, Allah said, I don't break my promise. But Ya Allah, you said, There have to be a day where Islam is the, the most dominant religion upon all the religions. And that hasn't happened yet. So what does it mean? It means it's coming. But not yet. It's on the way. But who's going to do that? He is the man we call it Al Mahdi Al Muntadar. He is the one that Allah promised that He is the one will conquer the entire world, which in a hadith of Ahl Sunnah and a hadith of Ahl al Bayt, all in combined, they all agreed that this world will not come to an end until Hat. Now, if you go to the older school of thought, they all believe that the world must experience somebody called Mahdi. Sunni and Shia all together. But the difference is one thing. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they said, Imam al Mahdi has not yet born, will be born when the time comes. But the Shia said, No, he was already born, he's already there. He's still alive. They said, no, 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 that's not going to be possible. Why it's not possible? They said, because it's not possible for any human being to live this long. How can he live that long? I said, okay. If I tell you something from the Quran, would you believe that it's possible? Okay, open your ears and mind. Because whenever we have dispute, right or wrong, let's go to the Quran. A Quran tells you that I can give somebody the longest life you cannot even imagine. Can you that? Allah says yes. No, not only that. It's a, I did too. One of them is shaitan. How long shaitan has been living? Huh? 200 years ago? Huh? One month ago? How many years he was living? Allahu Akbar. From before Adam was created, Shaitan was already there, breathing and living, right? And we believe he's still alive too. And Quran said, Shaitan, Rabbi anzirni ila yawmi yub'athun. Ya Allah, give me a life, long life, till the day of Qiyamah. What did Allah say to him? And it's in the Quran, Inna min al mundarin. We give you. You will live Till the day of Qiyamah. Now question. If Allah can give shaitan. The evil one. Huh? The long life. But he cannot give his beloved one too. Make sense to you? Allah gave shaitan. The evil one. He gave him. All these years. Adam. Noah. Yahya. Zakaria. Shuaib. Salah. All of them. They live. And shaitan was still living. MashaAllah. Enjoying. And he continues still to live. And Allah did that for him. But Allah cannot do that to Imam Mahdi. And it makes sense? Now, that's one thing. Now, another one. From the Quranic point of view, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Khidr. How long was Khidr living? 
Now take just cut from where? From the time of Musa, which Quran said about him. Now all the Mufassirin, Sunnah and Shia, they all agree that he's still living too. How many thousands of years Khidr is living and still here? Now, forget about the Khidr. Now, you go to the Quran. Allah told you about Nuh. فَلَبِثَ فِي قَوْمِهِ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ آمًا Nuh a.s. lived over 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And Imam al-Hujjah haven't even lived 2,000 years. And you still don't believe in that? Okay, forget about Imam. Now, come to Isa ibn Maryam. Isa, right, who came before Prophet Muhammad, and we believe in our Quran that Allah said, وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah said, they didn't kill him. They did not crucify him. It's in Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, we raise him. Still there. Ya Allah, is he going to come back? Say yes. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah An-Nisa, وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ Allah said, Isa would not die until he comes to prove to the Christians they're wrong. So Isa is still alive. And he was before Prophet Muhammad. He was before all of these imams, right? And still alive. And Imam al hujja who was just a few years, and you think it's not going to be possible. Just from the Quranic point of view. So from our belief, Imam al hujja is already been born and is still waiting for the time Allah to tell him to start his mission. That is our belief. Now, with that said, tonight we're talking about some of the signs of Imam al hujja but before that, I just want to talk about some of the misconceptions about Imam al hujja There are certain things people heard or believed about Imam al hujja and it's absolutely not correct. And we need to correct our belief regarding the 12th Imam. Number one, the first one, a lot of us, we are more concerned about seeing Imam. When is he going to come? I want to see him. When? 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 When is he going to come? All right? Okay. But before I go to why, why people want to see him, a lot of people ask, what good does Imam do for me when I cannot get access to him? How can he be my Imam? I have a question. He cannot answer. I have an issue. I can't go to him. What good does he do for me? So a lot of you, they ask this question. Because an imam is supposed to be there leading, guiding, teaching. None of that is happening. Why? And what good does it do for me as a person, as a follower of imam? The answer is, you have to understand, brothers and sisters. You and I are limiting the responsibility of imam. We think all he needs to do to teach you. All he needs to do, guide you. All he needs to do, teach. And that's not what the imam's job is. That is part of the job of imam. But there are many and many that he does. You and I don't even know about. And he doesn't need to be there for you to see that he's doing or not. There are so much that he's doing. And without the imam doing that, you and I would not be here. And I want to give you some of the practical examples from the Quranic point of view. Now, you and I, we read Quran. We read history. Do you know that today, today, as we live, there are so many things is happening. So many wrong things where people are still living, where the same act was done before and Allah destroyed them. You didn't need to hear about that? The people of Lut. What did they do for Allah to destroy them? Today, is that happening or not? Ya Allah, why didn't you destroy them? Well, they're here today, today, right? You think, mashallah, these people, they're cute, nice looking. So Allah said, I'm going to spare them. But the other ones, he destroyed them because they were bad looking. La wallah. 
the reason why those people still are prevented from destruction is because of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Allah. The reason is because of Muhammad. Now, we read in the Quran, some people, when disobedient, they were destroyed. Today, we're doing more than that, and we have not been destroyed. Do you know why? Quran in Surah An-Nisa tells you. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah said, we are not going to punish them, Ya Rasulullah. As long as you're one of them. Rahmatan lil alameen. Your existence among them is the reason for us not to destroy them. That's number one. Number two. Wahum yastagfirun. As long as some are doing istighfar for them. Now who are the ones doing istighfar? In hadith of Ahlul Bayt. Hum Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. We are still benefiting from the existence of 12 Imam, even though we cannot see him. That is number one. Number two, you read Ziyarat al Jami'ah. In Ziyarat al Jami'ah, it's mentioned in there. He said, Bikum yarzukul wara. With you, Allah provides for all creations. When you wake up and you sit in your car, I'm going to job to get my rizq, right? Now, Imam tells you in Dua al jamia he says, Allah is giving you because of them. Now, did you ever stop to think about all of this? That is the benefit of Imam and many more. Now, so Imam alayhi salam, the concept that you and I think, why is not there? Why can't I see him? You don't have to see the Imam, brothers and sisters. And that should not be our priority. Because we think seeing Imam is all what we need. If you really think about it, Shimar bin Zil Jawshan, didn't he see Imam Hussein? Hor! Didn't he see Imam Hussein in the beginning? What happened? Omar bin Saad, didn't he see, the didn't he see Imam Hussein? But the who turned and killed Imam Hussein at the same time? So seeing your imam shouldn't be your main concern. What should be your concern? Your concern is not only imam to be there, I should be given the tawfiq to be the true follower of that imam. That is the message, brothers and sisters. Don't get locked up. I want to see him. I want to see. No, no. If you see him, it's one thing. Now, even those who called imams, they didn't see imam. Huh? When you read the history, Ibn Muljam al Muradi, who struck Imam Ali, he saw him. But did the seeing Imam help him anything? No, he didn't. Those who killed Imam al Hassan, they didn't see Imam, they saw him. So seeing Imam shouldn't be that important to you. You praying to Allah to be on the path of Imam is the most important message. You read in the Dua Al-Ahad, Ya Allah, if I by chance die before his zuhur, فَأَخْرِجْنِي مِنْ قَبْرِي مُؤْتَزِرًا سَيْفِي مُؤْتَزِرًا كَفَنِي شَاهِرًا سَيْفِي مُلَبِّيًا دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْي This is what you need to pray for. Whenever he comes, give me the tawfiq so I can be prepared to be his servant. Now, if you become a servant, now in Dua Al-Ahad, then he says, وَقْحُ الْنَاذِرِ بِالنَّذَرِ مِنِّي Then bless my eyes to look at his beautiful face. If I become his followers. But prior to me being part of his followers, it doesn't help me even if I see him. So there's a difference between seeing Imam and being his true follower. So that is number one. Number two. One important thing also about the Imam. A lot of people think that when Imam comes, he's going to do a lot of killing. 
Some narration says, He will kill until the earth is filled with blood. This is not the right narration about Imam al -Hujj. Why so? Because our Imam is like his, his grandfather, Rasulullah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Rasulullah didn't come causing bloodshed, killing, slaughtering. That was not the act of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. When Imam comes, no, he will come to just kill and kill and kill. That's not the habit of Ahlul Bayt. As a matter of fact, Imam is going to be Rahmah. Mercy for mankind. Yes, I'm not saying that he's not going to fight. I'm not going to say that he's not going to kill some people. But it's going to be very, very few and not as much as people try to claim that Imam would do. Because Imam is a savior. Not the destroyer. Example, people who are working in the garden. When you walk in the beautiful garden and there are few thorns, what do you do? Do you destroy the whole garden because of the few thorns? Or no, you pick the bad thorns to save the good the ones that are already good out there. Imam al-Hujjah, when he comes, he comes to save mankind, not to destroy humanity. Those few ones who are the bad apples, yes, but the good ones, he will be the one to save them. And that is what Imam al-Hujjah is about. So when we hear about Imam al-Hujjah, not about bloodshed, killing. No, that's not what Imam al-Hujjah is about. That is number two. Number three. One of the misconceptions about Imam al-Hujjah, you see some books and some of the scholars, they put time and year, inshallah, this year, 2025, inshallah, is going to be here. Oh, who told you that? Which Quran revealed upon you to tell you that? Now, in the Hadith of Ali al-Bayt, كَذَبَ الْوَقَّاتُونَ Anybody who put time on the time of Imam is a liar. Why? Because according to the Hadith, no one knows when Allah will permit him to start his mission. The one who knows is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are not to put a time that, oh, this is the time he's going to show up. If he doesn't show up, no, that's not for you and I. And more importantly, brothers and sisters, sometimes we get caught up into what Imam Zaman is going to do. Forgetting what we supposed to do. A lot of time, when he comes, what is he going to do? Where is he going to be? When is he going to come? Are you worried about him? Now, Imam, he knows his responsibility. Don't worry about it. But the question is, have you done your homework to prepare for his arrival? So, instead of me and you worrying about, oh, when is he going to come? Where is he going to be? What's going to happen? You're better off to worry about yourself and building yourself and making yourself ready for whenever he comes. That should be our focus, brothers and sisters. Instead of focusing about him. That is number three. Number four. One of the things people also try to do as much as possible is to worry about Imam Zaman when he comes. How will the world be? Is he going to use technology or he's going to destroy technology? Would there be any Facebook or there won't be Facebook? Would there be any TikTok or would there be any talk TikTok? People ask this question. Because some of the narration says, when he comes, he is going to destroy all the technology. A'udhu Billah. You know, how do you decide that Imam is that bad? He doesn't know technology. He doesn't like civilization. Imam is just come, somebody coming from the... I don't know, Bush, and he comes and he just want to destroy everything good that has been done. A'udhu Billah. That's not your Imam and my Imam. Even Rasulullah, when he came, Rasulullah found some good things among the culture of Arab. He kept it. 
he only fought those the bad ones to work to eliminate the bad things. The good ones, he left people to use it. When Imam comes, he's not going to come and destroy the civilization to make people comfortable, to make people civilized. Imam is not against the civilization. But what Imam will be against, what that civilization does to people. It's a difference between civilization and what it does to people. So that is something we have to keep in mind. And these are some of the misconceptions. We need to get it straight. That's number one. Number two. What are the signs of this great imam? What should we look for when he comes? To answer this question, there are three signs of imam. There are three categories of his signs of appearance. Some of the signs already passed and gone. Some of them will live within it today. And some of them are yet to come. Three different stages of his signs. Now, some of them are general. Some of them are also indicating that the time of the whore is closer. And the third one is indicating he is here. And that's it. Now, what are the general signs of Imam that we need to look for? Which are indicating that Imam appearance is closer. Number one, one of them, they say, Ruju'ul Amwat ila dunya. What does it mean? Many dead people will come back to this life again. That's one of the signs of Imam. Many dead will come back. Now, I know some people thinking about reincarnation. I'm not talking about that. Because that has no room in Islam. But what we have in Islam is called a raja. Ah. There's a difference between reincarnation, which is called in Arabic a tanasuk, and there is a raja. Ah. Now, what does it mean a raja? Ah? A raja ah meaning from the Quran, there are a group of people who will be born, live on this earth for years, and then die. After they die. Allah will resurrect them from the grave. They wouldn't be born again. No, no, no. They will be resurrected from grave and they live on the earth for another period of years. That's called a raja. Ah. Now, for some people who might think, how could that be possible? Now, Quran confirms that. Many places in the Quran, Allah have proven something called a raja. Ah. One example. Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah talks about Uzair. Uzair, the story of Uzair. Allah says, Awa kalladhi marra ala qariyatin wa hiya khawiyatun ala urushiha qala anna yu'yi allahu hadhihi ba'da mawtiha. Uzair is one of the people who was traveling and he passed by a city where the entire city, all of them were dead. No even single person was living. Then Uzair said to himself, to himself, how can Allah bring all of these back to life again after they're all dead? Then Allah told him, Ya Uzair, die. You want to know about death? Die. For Allah said, we made him dead. We killed him. He took his life. Now, he was dead. After many years, Allah said, Thumma ba'atha. Then we resurrected him. After he came back, Allah sent Jabrail. Ya Jabrail, ask him, Kam labith? How long were you here? Guess what Uzair said? Yawman aw ba'ala yawm. I was here like a day or half a day, maybe like 12 hours, I was sleep. Then Allah told him, No, Ya Uzair, you're wrong. Why? He said, Unzur ila himarik. You have a donkey that you're riding, right? Look at, look at it. He turned and look. Quran says, the donkey was nothing but bones. Meaning was dead for years. Now, Quran, how long was he dead? Allah says, to arm, 100 years. Uzair was dead. Allah brought him back. Then Allah said, look, ya Uzair, unzur ila himarik. Look at your donkey. Kayfa nunshizuha, thumma naksuha lahma. 
Yahweh look at this donkey and see how we're going to bring the bones together and then put the flesh and then put the skin and get your donkey back to see how Allah is able to bring the dead back. Uzair was sitting, watching. He saw the bones started coming together. In a matter of the seconds, the skeleton was there. Then in a matter of another second, he saw that the flesh coming and then the skin before he realized his donkey is standing right there. But then Allah wants to show Uzair a miracle. Allah said, okay, that's your donkey, right? وَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِكَ وَشَرَابِكَ Now look at your food. What is it? Allah said, لَمْ يَتَسَنَّ Nothing happened to that food. Between the food and the animal, who, which one's supposed to go bad quicker? Huh? Now if you keep a food outside, right? No refrigerator. Can it survive 24 hours without getting the germs on it? Allah said, no. Wandur ila ta'amika wa Look at the food. Lam yatasanna. Allah said, nothing happens to it. He looked and the food and water for 100 years, exactly the way he left it. <laughs> Allah said, ya Uzair, this is to tell you that Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. That is what we call a raja. So a raja from the Quran is there. Now there are many ayahs that prove about, about, about raja, and one of them is this. So from the hadith of Al Bayt, one of the signs of the coming of Imam is Ruju al Mauta. But is it gonna be everybody wants to come, they can come? No. Who can come? Who cannot come? Now from hadith of Al Bayt, there have to be two groups. Who will come back after they die? One group are the worst and the worst people ever lived on the earth. And died, Allah will bring them back. Why? One of the reasons, so that Allah give them a chance if they will change. But Allah knows they're not going to change. But Allah brings them anyway, so Yawmul Qiyamah, they have no excuse. And Quran quoted them too. That this will happen Yawm Al-Qiyamah that in Surah Ghafir in some Quran is called Surah Al-Mu'min. Now, this Surah, check it out. There is an ayah Allah says, قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَمَتَّنَا ثْنَتَيْنِ وَأَحْيَيْتَنَا ثْنَتَيْنِ فَأَتَرَفْنَا بِذُنُوبِنَا فَهَلْ إِلَىٰ خُرُوجٍ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ Allah says Yawm Al-Qiyamah those individuals, the bad people who were given the chance and they came back and they did the wrong things and they died again. Yawm al-Qiyamah, they will say to Allah, Rabbana, O oh our Lord, amattana thnatayn. You took our life twice. Wa ahyaytana, and gave us a life twice. They say, fa'atarafna bidhunubina. We confess our sins. However, hal min khurujin sabi, is there any way out? And let's say, no, there's no way out. That's the group number one who will be given chance to come back to this world. Now, the second group are the mu'mineen al-khullas. And inshallah, we're all part of that. On top of those group, what? It's the Prophet Muhammad and Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Now, don't be surprised from the hadith of Ali al-Bayt, Rasulullah will come back. Imam Ali will come back. All the Imams, they will all come back to enjoy the government of Imam al hujja Now, what is the proof? When you read Ziyarat Warith, pay attention, careful. It is mentioned in Ziyarat Warith. What does it say? It says, وَبِئِيَابِكُمْ مُوْقِنْ Al-Iyab in Arabic, Abiman al-Ruju. Aba, Ya'ubu, I raja'a. Wa bi'iyabikum. I am, not only I believe you're going to come back, I am certain that you're coming back. The word is said, Wa bi'iyabikum mu'min. No, mu'qin, from the word yaqeen. There's no doubt about it. That you're coming back they will come to establish that government 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth. Now, so from the hadith, the first sign of the hur that the people who were dead, they will come back. Now the question is, will they know that they were dead and they come back? Yes, they will. Now, not only that, they will notice one another. Yeah, yeah, we were in Barzakh. Remember, mashallah, I saw you there. Right? We were there before. Yes, yes. Allahu Akbar. And today as we speak, and I don't know if any of you watch, there is a, what would you call, a program in Iran. People who were in Barzakh and they came back to life again. It's happening today as we speak. The people who were completely dead, they saw deceased in Barzakh, they came back and they tell him the story of what happened there. That is one of the signs of Zuhur of Imam. And not only that, many of the companions of Imam al hujjah will be those also who will be resurrected also. That it is mentioned that before it's Zuhur, those three thirteen companions, they will all gathered in Mecca. And they will all have one uniform. You know, have you seen the army, police, they have uniform? Have you seen the soldiers, they have uniform? Now, three titans of Imam, they have uniform too. Now, what is their uniform? Aba and Qaba, Imama? No, there's not. They say their uniform is what we call Ihram. When they showed up there, the Ihram is their uniform. And not only that, they have another uniform which you and I should learn tonight. What are they? They have sifat khasa. One of the signs of those 313, when you see them, they have the features of disciples. Allahu Akbar. What does it mean? They say, when you look at their face, they have alamat as salat. When you see their face, there is alamat to sujood on their face. So you and I, if you want to wait for Imam, you have to be namazi. You have to be ahl salat. You cannot be companion of Imam al-Hujjah when you are not part of the salat. And not just the Imam. You come to Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. One of the message of Imam Hussein is about the importance of Salat. That is one of the signs. Number two, is see when you look at their lips, it's very dry. For two reasons. One, kathra to siyam wa dhikr. Constantly in the station of dhikr of Allah. And not only that, Mondays and Thursdays fasting is on top of their list. Not only that, when you see them, they say, Muhdawdabina Zahar. They curvy back. When you see them, they curve like this. Allahu Akbar. But you will think if you push them, they will fall. But they are the strongest men you can ever imagine. Because you know, fasting makes you stronger. You see them curve. When they stand, min kathratu sujudi wa ruku. Because of the sujud and ruku, that they do a lot. You see them, this is their features. And on top of that, ahlul Quran. They are the friends of Quran. These are the features of the Imam Zaman's companions. And that is number one of those signs. Now, number two. One of the signs of the Imam al zuhur it says, when you see the world is completely divided into two, then that is the time of Zuhur. What are they? What does it mean? Now, it says, إِذَا جَئِذَا صَارَ الْعَالَمْ بَيْنَ ظَالِمٍ ومظلوم. The world will be completely divided. Either any person you see, anyone, either they are classified as zalim, tyrant, or mazloom, or oppressed. That's how the world will be. Now, a zalim to oppress others, mazloom to oppress ones. Now, today, today, as we speak, you close your eyes, bring any world map in front of you, put your finger on any country, 
either they are zalim or they are Muslim. Any country today in the world either is zalim or Muslim. That's the world we live in today. He said, when that happens, that is the time of appearance of Imam. Because the hadith says, at the time of Zuhur, it says, Hatta yamla'ul arda qistan wa adla ba'dama muli'at dhulman wa jawra. When the world is filled with injustice. That's what Imam is coming. To the world we live in today is one of the signs. My dear brothers and sisters, there are so many signs. But what is more important, brothers and sisters, as a take-home message tonight, how much are we prepared for ourselves and our children for the imam of our time? That's the take-home message tonight. Now, I know for sure my imam is coming. He's going to come. I know that. But when, I don't know. And when he comes, he's going to need me to be his side. Now, how well prepared am I that if he come today and say, hey, let's go. Am I ready to take my bag? I'm going to say, no, no, no. I have to call my boss. I don't have to pay my mortgage. No, no, my car. No, my house. Which one is it? Are you really ready? And tonight, I want you to learn from the great woman and great man who prepared their son for the imam of their time. Who is that man? Imam al Hassan. Who is that woman? The mother of Qasim. Imam al Hassan, alayhi salam, before his martyrdom, he knew a time will come. Imam Hussein will need a help. So he prepared his son, Qasim, for the date of appearance of that Imam, Imam al-Hussein. How so? It is mentioned that before Imam al-Hassan Matudam, he called his son. Ya Qasim, I will not live to see the day of Ashura. But when that day come, you will be alive. What are you ready to do for your uncle, Imam al Hussein? Qasim was listening to his father. Then Imam, uh, Imam Hassan said to him, Ya Bunayya Qasim, Ida sama'ta ammaka al Hussein, Yakul, Hal min nasir in yansuruna, Fala tu qasir fi nusati. Whenever a day comes and you hear your uncle, I say, make sure that you go and you help and sacrifice for him. Imam al Hassan was preparing his son for that day because he knew it's going to come. Now, you and I, we know Imam al Zaman is coming. We always pray for Imam al Zaman's appearance. Now, how well prepared are you for yourself and your children? Imam al Hassan didn't even stop there, he wrote a note. For Qasim, he said, Qasim, I know something you don't know. When that day comes, I know your uncle wouldn't let you. But I'm going to write a permission from me as your father that I guaranteed, I granted you permission to sacrifice for your uncle Hussein. And he wrote and gave to Qasim. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam left this wall. The day of Ashura came. Before that, his mother, she heard everything her husband, Imam al Hassan, said. And she reminded Qasim, Ya Qasim, do you remember what your father said? This is the time. Are you ready? Are you prepared? لِنُسْرَةَ أَمِّكَ Hussein. Qasim alayhi salam said, Bala, I remember. Mother, not only I remember, I have the paper too. She said, make sure that you carry that paper with you to Karbala. On the day of Ashura, mother of Qasim, she was in the tent and she was looking and she could see Qasim is there. She called Qasim. What is stopping you 
to support your uncle Hussein. Qasim said, I went to my uncle several times and I asked him that he didn't let me go. She then reminded him, Ya Qasim, don't you have the letter? Permission from your father, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam? He said, yes, I do. Did you show him to your uncle? He said, no, I haven't. She said, let's go. Ya Aba Abdullah, why are you not letting Qasim to go to the battlefield? Then Imam Hussein said, Ya Umm Qasim, you are the wife of my, my brother. Imam says, whenever I look at Qasim, he reminds me my brother Al-Hassan alayhi salam. And any time I see him, I feel attached to Qasim because of the resemblance of Imam Al-Hassan. And I don't feel he is at the age that he should go to the battlefield. And not only that, I said, because Qasim is still young. He is not yet married. He has a long life in front of him. He needs to get married, establish, have a future. I don't want to take all of that away from Qasim. When Imam Hussein said all of this, then mother of Qasim said, show him the letter of your father. Qasim took the letter and he gave to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ya Aba Abdullah, this is the letter from my father. What is it? He said, Bunaya al Hasb Bunaya Qasim, Eda Wajetta Nafsaka Yoma Ashura, Wasamata Ammakal Hussein Yakul, Halmin Nasir and Yan Suruna, Fala to Kasser fi Nusurate. When you live to see Ashura and you hear your uncle is calling hal min nasir yansuruna hal min mu'in yu'inuna hal min dhab yadhab an haram rasulillah when you hear those voices from Aba Abdullah I said make sure that you sacrifice for Aba Abdullah when Imam Hussein heard that and read that he hugged Qasim he cried they both fell on the ground I said, Ya Qasim, why this letter? When I look at you, I remember my brother Hassan, the time of his martyrdom, as they poisoned him, and he was throwing blood and blood and blood. I saw how he suffered before he left. He said, I saw you, I remember him, and I get some comfort. Now you want to go and fight and get killed where I watch you go through pain and suffering like my, my brother Hassan? Allahu Akbar. Then Qasim said, Ya Ammi al Hussein, Ya Aba Abdullah, Hada was Hadihi wasiya to Abi al Hassan. This is the will of my father, and I have to honor that, Ya Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, Ya Qasim, if that is the case, I permitted you. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was looking at Qasim as he walked towards the battlefield. As he looked at him walking, he remembered his brother Hassan alayhi salam. As Qasim was walking, you can see him resemblance of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. He went to the battlefield. The, the, the trouble started. Qasim alayhi salam continued the battle. He fought and fought and fought. Finally, he was empowered by the enemies of Allah. But before that, Qasim, he was wearing the sandals. One of the sandals got torn as he was fighting. Qasim knelt down to fix it. One of the cowards came from the back, from hiding. He struck Qasim alayhi salam. Qasim called his uncle, Assalamu alaykum. Peace be upon you, my uncle. Imam Hussein rushed towards him as he reached to Qasim alayhi salam. Qasim was his final moment. As he looked at his face, Qasim was saying something to his uncle. What did you say in your Qasim? As he was saying, my father is right here. My father, Imam al Hassan, is here. Saying that, when are you coming, Ya Aba Abdullah? We are waiting for your arrival. Allah, 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 Allah,
يا حسين اس گڑی رو اس گڑی رو اے بہت شہ کو حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے اس گڑی روئے بہت اس گڑی روئے بہت شہ کو حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے ہائے قاسم نا تیرے ٹھکر بدن کے ہوتے ہائے قاسم نا تیرے ٹھکر بدن کے ہوتے روک کے سینے سے ہے روک کے سینے سے لگا یا تو حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے اور وبا میں ڈالے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے اور عبا میں ڈالے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے اور عبا میں ڈالے باندھ کر لا شاہ باندھ کر لا شاہ اٹھا یا تو حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے اور عبا میں ڈالے ٹکر قاسم کے چنے اور عبا میں ڈالے باندھ کر لا شاہ باندھ کر لا شاہ اٹھا یا تو حسن یاد آئے لا شاہ قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے لا شاہ قاسم کا نظر آیا حسن یاد آئے مہندی ارمانوں کی ہاتھوں میں لگا کے مانے مہندی ارمانوں کی ہاتھوں میں لگا کے مانے سہرا ماتے پہ ہے سہرا ماتے پہ سجا یا تو حسن یاد آئے لاشا قاسم 
का नजर आया हसन याद आए लाश कासिम 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 का नजर आया हसन याद आए टुकड़े कासिम के चुने और अबा में डाले टुकड़े कासिम के चुने और अबा में डाले बांध कर लाशा है बांध कर ला शा उठा या तो हसन याद आए लाश कासिम का नजर आया हसन याद आए लाश कासिम का नजर आया हसन याद आए फैज शबीर जो का सिम का जनाजा लाए फैज शबीर जो का सिम का जनाजा लाए जख्मी तीरों पे है जख्मी तीरों पे जनाजे पे हसन याद आए लाश का सिम का नजर आया हसन याद आए लाश का सिम का नजर आया हसन याद आए लाश का सिम का नजर आया हसन या हुसैन या ಅಕಬರ ಅಲಿ 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 ಅಕಬರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಶಬೆ ಪಯಂಬರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಶಬೆ ಪಯಂಬರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಜೋನಜರ ಉತಾಕೆ ತುಮ ಕುದೇಕು ಏ ಬೇಟ ಏ ಜೋನ ಕ್ಯೂಸರ ಜೋಕಾಯೆ ಕರೆ ಹುಯೆ ಹು ಏ ಬೇಟ ಏ ಜೋನ ತುಮಿ ತುಮ ಜರ ಕಾಸರ ಹು ಏ ಬೇಟ ए जान मादर अली अली ए जान मादर अली अली शबे पयंबर अली अली शबे पयंबर अली 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 अकबर अली 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 अकबर अली अली शबे पयंबर अली अली शबे पयंबर अली अली जाना ए मेरे यूसुफ जमाल अकबर रुक जाऊं ए जाना न जी सकेगी तुम्हारे मादर रुक जाऊं ए जाना सहेगी कैसे ये दाक सरोवर रुक जाऊं ರಕೂಯಿ ಸಫ ದರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ರಕೂಯಿ ಸಫ ದರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಶಬೆ ಪಯಂಬರ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಶಬೆ ಪಯಂಬರ ಅಲಿ 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 ಅಕ್ಬರ್ ಅಲಿ ಅಲಿ ಶಬೆ ಪಯಂಬರ ಪೆನೋಹಾ ಜೋನ 
جانے کس لیے ہے درنے ان کے بازو کے نہ جانے کس لیے ہے درنے ان کے بازو کے ہزار بو سے لگا سے لگا لگا کے لیے علی نے مانگا تھا غازی کو کربلا کے لیے وفاتی ان کے لیے اور یہ وفا کے لیے علی نے مانگا تھا غازی کو کربلا کے لیے 
जरी के पैरों को चूमा है रोजे आशूरा जरी के पैरों को चूमा है रोजे आशूरा ये खुश नसीब रहे मोजे अलकमा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इन ये खिजर राह है पर चम्बी इनके राब नुमा ये खिजर राह है हर चम्बी इनके राह नुमा समंदरों के सितारों के और हवा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए के लिए अलम के साए में आते ही मिल गई सेहत अलम के साए में आती ही मिल गई सेहत तरस रहे थे कहीं दी से जो शफा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा के लिए अली ने के लिए वफाती इनके लिए के लिए सकीना बाबा से इसने फिगा दिला हो हमें सकीना बाबा से इसने फिगा दिला हो हमें जरा सा काम ये कर दो फकत चचा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा के लिए लबे फरात जो बाजो कलम हुए इनके लबे फरात जो बाजो कलम हुए इनके बहुत बड़ा था ये गम रू है सैदा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए वफाती इनके लिए और ये वफा के लिए अली ने मांगा था गाजी को करबला के लिए या अब्बास या अब्बास 
يا عباس يا عباس گلشن زہرا گلشن زہرا گلشن زہرا گلشن زہرا زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے 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 زہرا تیرے ہر پھول نے سر دے کے اسلام کو پالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے افسوس مسلمانوں آشور کو مقتل میں افسوس مسلمانوں آشور کو مقتل میں قرآن کے پاروں کو نیزوں سے اچھالا ہے ہر پھول نے سر دے کے اسلام کو پالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے اے موت کبھی تو نے زیناب سے نہیں پوچھا اے موت کبھی تو نے زیناب سے نہیں پوچھا اٹھارہ برس کیسے اس شہر کو پالا ہے ہر پھول نے سر دے کے اسلام کو پالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے بس قبر زہرا کی ڈوبی ہے اندیروں میں بس قبر زہرا کی ڈوبی ہے اندیروں میں حالات مدینے میں ہر سمت اجالا ہے ہر پھول نے سر دے کے اسلام کو پالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے افسوس مسلمانوں آشور کو مقتل میں افسوس مسلمانوں آشور کو مقتل میں قرآن کے پاروں کو نیزوں پہ اچھالا ہے ہر پھول نے سر دے کے اسلام کو پالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے زہرا تیرے گلشن کا ہر پھول نرالا ہے یا حسین
in two urgent announcements. First one is regarding the car park. Momenina humble requested, do not park your cars on Burton Street. Some of the Mominins have already parked their cars on Burton Street and our neighbors have been very upset and it's caused a lot of inconvenience. We have enough space at the Bowling Green Alley. Momenina are humbly, humbly, humbly requested, please <coughs> make sure you park your cars and support the volunteers in the Bowling Green Alley and also in the Hussein Islamic Center's car park. If you get stuck and you don't have anywhere to park your cars, please do not park them on Burton Street. The next announcement is for the Hazrat Abbas Alayhi Salaam Sniyaz, which will be tomorrow. The sitting arrangements are as follows. For the elderly, it will be downstairs in the new extension. And for the rest of us, will be upstairs. Bar Muhammad Inwali Muhammad Salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا باب الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوسيم السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا أبد الله لقد أظمت الرضية وجلت وأظمت المصيبة بك علينا ولا جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وأظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أثاث الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وذالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله, فلعن ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله موحدين لهم بتمكين من كتابكم من كتابكم بريت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشيائهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا أبد الله إني سلم لمن صالمكم وهرب لمن هربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله ولا زياد ولا مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاتبة ولعن الله ابن مرجان ولعن الله مر ابن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجت والجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لكد أضم مصابيبك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أحل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا أبد الله إني أتكرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونسب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسست أثاث الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرار إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسست أثاث ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانه وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم 
wa ala asya'ikum Bariitu ila Allah wa ilaykum minhum Wa takarrabu ila Allah thumma ilaykum bi mu'alatikum Wa mu'alati waliikum wa bil baraati min a'daikum Wa nasibin lakum ul harb Wa bil baraati min ashya'ihim wa atba'ihim wa uliya'ihim يا أبا أبد الله إني سلم لمن صالمكم وهرب لمن هربكم وولي لمن ولاكم وعدو لمن عداكم فأسأل الله الذي يكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من عدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم كدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثاري مع إمام الهدى ظاهر الناتك بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشعن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبته مصيبة ما عظمها وعظم رضيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع أهل السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك سلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومات مات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تباركت به بنو أمية وابن آكرة الأفرد العين النلين على لسانك ولسان النبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقفف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم أن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد بن معاوية عليهم منك العنة وعبد العابدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مغوان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليك اللهم فضائف عليهم العنة منك والعذاب العنيب اللهم إني أتكرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقف هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وعلى نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العنى ولا ذال من ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وأخرت بالله ولا ذلك اللهم العنى اللهم عن الإسابة التي جاهدت الحسين عليه السلام وشايات وبايات تابت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا أبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت بقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لديارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خس أن تولى ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم الثاني والثالث والرابع اللهم أن يزيد خامسا ولعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجان وعمر بن سعد وشمرا وعلى بي سفيان وعلى زياد وعلى مروان إلى يوم القيامة شجود اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مسابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رضيه اللهم ارزقني أني شفاة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذي بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام
Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum ya Amir al-Mu'minin Assalamu alaikum ya Fatima Zahra Assalamu alaikum ya Kajit al-Kubra Assalamu alaikum ya Hassan al-Mushtaba Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah al-Hussain Wa ala tisat al-Masumin al-Munduriyatik Ali ibn al-Hussain wa Muhammad ibn Ali wa Jafir ibn Muhammad wa Musan ibn Jafir wa Ali ibn Musa wa Muhammad ibn Ali wa Ali ibn Muhammad wa Hassan Hassan ibn Ali wa Hujabt ibn Hassan Adrullah Farja Assalamu alaikum ya rahmatullahi barakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allahumma al-kuli waliyika Hujabt ibn al-Hassan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai Fi hazin al-sati wa fi kuli sa'a Waliyan wa hafidha wa qaida al wa nasira wa dalila al wa ayna Hatta tuskirahu arzaka tawa muti mutiyahu fiha tawila bi rahmatika ya alhamar rahimin أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Jalla Jalala Rabbi Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله 
أشهد أن مولانا ومهتدانا أمير المؤمنين وأولاده المأسومين بالهك حججوا هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاة هيا على الفلاة هيا على هيا على خير العمل الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم جل كلب بارا وإشكارا ورزك دارا وعمل السارا وأولاد أبرارا وجل عند كبر نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وآله مستكرا وكرارا